Hi everyone, this is the IPFS Core Orientations Weekly Sync for Monday the 18th of May 2020. I am Nikki Brain, I will be your host. We are going to discuss uh, all the top uh, initiatives, the high priority initiatives that we're working on. We're going to go through the low priority initiatives and then questions and answers and etc. Uh, so first thing on the list, the high priority initiative the upcoming ship releases. Um, let me do a quick update on JS IPFS. Uh, we shipped this morning, um, version 0.44. Um, that includes the first pass of cancelable requests, um, which is quite neat. So that that the thing in a timeout, uh, which you can use today. And then also passes on the abort signal the component below in the stack, which they can listen on for um, either the timeout occurring or the user passing in an abort signal and aborting it. It's quite cool. Uh, it also has um, a data store for the browser, which is data store IDB, uh, which just removes some of the uh, indirection of going via uh, data store level and then level JS and then index DB. Uh, which is really cool. It's a lot faster. It's smaller. That's not today. It's great. Um, it's, uh, and also because because the backend data store is the same as NMI data, um, it's just indexed all the time. Uh, because they remove all the use of node globals and built ins, uh, which is reduce the bundle size almost imperceptibly um, which is quite nice because the um and then see the, the uh webpack etc would bundle those um built-ins and so now we have control over which ones we use which we don't um so now we have ever so slightly smaller bundle size which is great and also the in the future webpack's going to stop doing this automatic so it's important to get this done so that's cool um, that is it for JS uh, blog post can come on. So actually there's a PR, I did, I did a release and I did a blog post on the same day. It literally has never happened. I'm very happy with myself. Yeah. If people could stop putting comments on it and just approve it instead. Of that. I don't doubt it. Um, Stephen, do you want to talk about IPFS and the one Uh Yeah, 0.51 was released. Um, it didn't have many changes. It was a small patch release with a, uh, some fixes for uh, a quick leak uh, and then a fix for an IPFS timeout bug. And then oh, we also had an issue where like if you canceled a, um, someone's editing weird things. Okay. Uh, if you canceled a, um, a deep sleep query, it might spin for a while. So. But that was it. Oh, okay, moving on to content routing. Um, a Hydra update. Yeah, I'm sorry, we haven't talked for two weeks, so it's a little bit long. Um, but uh, the, so Hydra, last time we talked, uh, I was uh, going on about a, like a memory leak in the new uh, Postgres or the, the SQL data store. Um, but it turned out it wasn't a memory leak. It was just that the Postgres server was running at 100% CPU. And so queries were executing really slowly. Things were getting backed up. And that was bad all around. Um, but good news, uh, uh, indexes, text indexes. There's been uh, quite a few points in my life where I've just added an index. And things have got magically better. And it happens. Uh, it's very pleasing when it does happen. Column um, and then the 100% CPU issue just went away and it just started working great. Uh, is everyone still there? It says, it's, uh, it says my internet connection is unstable, but hopefully I can get through this. Um, Quick had a memory leak. Um, I, that was fixed and then I deployed again and there was seemed to still be a memory leak. Um, so that's not good. I took a pprof profile and said, sent it to uh, Martin. Um, so that's in the Slack in the Hydra Booster channel if you're interested in that. Uh, I have not opened a bug yet for that issue. Um, yeah, go for it, Stephen. But I, I think that might have just been, so we had a second issue where we're using a lot of memory, it wasn't actually a leak. Um, it may have been that. Yeah. Yeah, there was a, a it's like a, a queue, um, which I think was resolved. And so I, updated to the latest version of quick and deployed that and then i saw that it was still being leaky uh so yeah um 
Okay, so I'm um, carrying on. Um, the the hydras now that we have the Postgres data store have like they all share the same data store, and there's around like 20 million provider records in there that they're serving right now. So that's super cool. That kind of goes up and down according to GC because they don't live forever, um, but it's sort of around 20 million at the moment, which is kind of cool. Um, I scaled them up to five. We've got, now got five hydras with 100 heads each. So that's cool. Uh, over the weekend, I switched to using the P the peer store data store peer store with data store so it's not in memory um which is kind of cool uh that removed about 10 5 to 10 gigs of like ram usage which is uh which is pretty mad um but i did have gc enabled at first uh it has like a the for some reason the date the peer store the data store peer store has the concept of gc and occasionally it was freaking out like quite often it was freaking out and so uh, it would either use all of the memory or crash so I turned off GC and things were a lot better. Um, so th I think there's still some investigation to do there, but, um, but in theory, we've just removed a whole chunk of RAM that we were using, um, which is great. Um, uh, so next up for me for Hydra's, I'm, like I'm not, I'm just kind of working on this in my spare time at the moment because I'm working on a DRAM project, but um, I wanted to add add five more Hydra's, get the older DHT boosters could decommissioned. Um, I still need to finish a document on what is remaining uh, and like what what happened up until up until this point. Um, but hopefully, I'll find some time to do that. Thank you for listening. Sorry, that was really long. It has been two weeks. Now a lot happens in two weeks. Okay, moving on. Subdomain gateway. Base thirty two origin isolation. Lighty. <clears throat> so a quick update is that uh, the dweb link uh, finally supports IP and S and that includes uh, seamless uh, conversion. I, can, I don't know, I can share my screen just to show that it works. Um, so hopefully like if you open a path on our gate, canonical subdomain gateway, it will now automatically, okay, I have companion. <laughs> if you don't have companion, and you open it, uh, it should at some point resolve IPNS name and then uh, load that from uh, a subdomain. Uh, I don't think we want to wait for that. It's faster, but not that fast, I think. Um, another thing uh, is uh, sort of like an open problem we've happened uh, uh, recently. It's the limitation of the DNS uh, naming, like generally the DNS spec uh, it has hard-coded in RFC limits of how long a single label, uh, which is between dots in a domain name, uh, can be, and the overall entire name, how long that can be. And we are, due to the fact that we are sort of like planning to switch to, um, to those new keys, uh, that sort of like got populated closer uh, on our timeline. So the problem here is that if we switch to those key ED uh, 25519 keys, we will run over the 63 character limit, which is super unfortunate because we just landed subdomain gateways. And now the CID of like, if we plan to switch the default, like the default keys to that new, uh, new new thing we will run over that limit so that means ipns websites would have problem because you are not able to resolve name that's over like has a label over that limit so there's an issue if you want to like learn more details about that i think that's probably something we may want to have like a design discussion i i'm not sure uh, probably steven has some thoughts here um First, like there are two issues. Like one is that if we switch to this new key standard, uh, we will run over the limit in our default IPNS spec. So that's like the problem one. And the second problem is like the generic one of at any point, someone can pick a longer hash, for example, SHA 512. And that's super long. And it will also like run over that limit. So it's like, ah. And then I didn't, <laughs> we had a discussion and it turns out uh, 
even like Slack has like hard coded DNS spec into the way the links are detected. So you can see that even like those two characters here were not picked up. So it's like super unfortunate. And like the one a solution is to just split after uh, after add the limit of 63 characters and then the remainder remainder will be in the next uh, sub label that's fine from the security perspective because we would maximize the uh, size of the label which is used for calculating uh, origin um, and on our gateways anyway it's uh, it's like self isolated but just like in case someone is like doing dns hijacking or something that would still provide a proper isolation uh, like here uh, are there better ways uh, i don't think i don't think so uh, there's a longer discussion i think steven may want to have like a design uh, uh, design meeting maybe later and there's like a separate section for that uh, it's just like me highlighting that the issues uh, still open uh, we have IPNS subdomain support in MetaMask, <laughs> and uh, there's also like open PR from Infura to support um, wildcard subdomain gateway. So, for example, um, to allow having a subdomain per user of of a gateway provider, uh, so they have like a, their own origin isolation on top of the origin isolation of the gateways. Um, I think that's it for subdomain gateway news. Um, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know if Stephen wants to add something now or maybe later in the design discussions. Uh, well, there's a bunch of stuff at the bottom about all the problems and trade-offs. Uh, cool. One, like, like we, we could use a, um, a shorter encoding of things, but that would require like change, yeah, well, making deep changes potentially with P2P. Um, or not making deep changes to libp2p, which would then mean that we would it would be harder to make these deep changes to libp2p if we wanted to make them later. Um, uh, so kind of stuck there. Uh, yeah. By level, do you want to, to uh, schedule a design meeting for them this week to just hash this out? Yeah, I think so. We should at least uh, come up with some like rules of thumb. Like, like my personal rule of thumb is do not like compromise future optimizations like the one like 10 percent on the lip p2p level for a quick win for the quick ux win today yeah. things like that so i think we should have a conversation for that yeah uh so we inadvertently skipped a couple of pieces from the content routing section uh in the dht and that research retreat um, can anybody speak to me Yeah. Wait, sorry, what'd you say? We, we talked about, we, uh, we've got a few things for uh, GoFS 0.6, including just making the DHT a little uh, more performant, reducing allocations, fixing some uh, bug, some, some things and improving the query times by stretching the queries out, which we're going to try and land. Uh, we spent most of last week doing some, uh, you know, discussions about how, we do NAT traversal uh, and IPFS in the P2P and what we would like to see. Um, some results include having a dial back protocol would be good um, and would at the very least make it easy for public gateways to get in for, to get data out of uh, nodes that are behind NAT so that, you know, if you're running, you know, IPFS desktop at home behind your NAT, nothing is configured, you don't have UPnP or anything like that, at least you'll still be able to get your data from the gateways. Um, it's not as good as having, say, like, full hole punching setup for letting two nodes that are both behind NATs talk to each other, but that seems like another, another thing to prioritize as well. Um, so things like WebRTC, maybe using turn uh, just as it is, uh, even if, if we don't want to go the full auto relay route. Yeah, those, those sorts of things. This is especially helpful now. It's like sort of step one, we cleared, we cleared knotted nodes out of the DHT and now it's like step two, how do we give these knotted nodes like, you know, a better, a better experience 
and then we can start you know, thinking about how we want to re-include them. I guess a lot of these native nodes will feel a bit like browser nodes when no one can dial them. Um, yeah, I think there are also some issues, uh, I think linked from there, I think Hector put one up maybe about, uh, at the very least, trying to, uh, in the near future, be able to inform users as to like their NAT status um, so that they can understand why something's not working, right? Like, oops, I'm behind a firewall that like denies all inbound connections. I shouldn't be surprised that nobody can get any data from me, uh, right? Because sometimes users will just assume it's an IPFS thing when in reality, it's like their company has a firewall and it denies inbound connections. There's nothing we can do about that right now. Cool, um, so we've got nine minutes left. It's got time check there. Uh, so bits for publics. Yeah, just a couple of uh, things I'm working on at the moment. One is doing some performance improvements uh, to help with some Filecoin use cases. And secondly, I'm also doing quite a big refactor just to tighten up synchronization of uh, how we sort of request once for sessions and how that um, syncs up with, with what's in the block store. Cool. Uh, Peter, the stream-based content, uh, stream content. Yes. Peter. Yes, very quick update. So two weeks ago, I said something to the effect of, yeah, I need to implement this one thing and then, and then we're ready. 5,000 lines of changes later, literally, it is ready. <laughs> so uh, everything converges with everything. The performance develops exactly where it's supposed to be. Uh, I am right now working in parallel on uh, writing up documentation for all of this and uh, getting the uh, re replicate uh, an experiment that Michael did last, uh, not Michael, Andrew, uh, did uh, last uh, year on uh, ingesting uh, the Ubuntu repository to see which parts of the work should be first migrated to Go IPFS because there are several pieces of this uh, to see which one is the most uh, win. So we can focus on that. That's all I have. Uh, cool, so anyone from the Rust uh, IPFS initiative? No. Okay. Uh, pistol improvements. Um, yes. Uh, so uh, basically, in the LibreTP side, it's everything finished now. So the the port milestone with the keybook and the keychain integration is done. Everything is merged in the 0 0.28 release branch. And uh, uh, I've been discussing some stuff with Lidl regarding the metadata of the book. And uh, initially, we didn't have it in the scope for this release and for these improvements in the peer store. But since I was in this context and it would be like two or three days of work, we decided to also uh, implement it. It's already implemented and also merged in the 0 0.28 release. So basically the next steps now are uh, released the 0 0.28, which we are almost done, I, I would say. Basically, uh, we merged everything last week. Jacob will be out this week, but we plan to release it once he comes back next week. And uh, with that, also integrate this on JSIPFS, which I'm currently working on. And it's basically just updates to the new branch of the 0 0.28. And that's it for me. Cool. Uh, next up, council will request in JSIPFS. Um, so the ship um, gave the update as part of the uh, new releases. Um, the next like thing to do here is to get some of the sub components to um, cancel things. So uh, I'm going to look at uh, bit swap. So when you want a, a CID, you don't have it goes into the want list. Um, if you cancel that request, it should come out of the want list. Um, that's going to be the next thing to do. And that's it for the high priority initiatives. So onto the other initiatives, uh, low uh, low priority or on hold ones. Uh, Unix SV 1.5 and Go IPFS. No updates. 
no updates. Uh, migration to the multi uh, to multi hash keys in the block store. Um, so we had a we had a meeting about this last Tuesday, uh, which was very productive. Uh, we decided the way forward. We're going to store um, blocks by multi hash, uh, and then the Rust team is going to look at um, storing metadata um, around those blocks, uh, which is going to be cool. There's a link in the notes to the resolution. Uh, pinning system revamp uh, in JS IPFS. So this was kind of uh, predicated on the output of the um, multi hash keys in the block store um, discussion, which has happened. So I can move forward with this now. I'm uh, going to do the bit, stop, bit swap stuff first. That's probably going to take the whole week. And then next week, it's probably going to be pinning. Okay, design review proposals. Uh, we're going to have a meeting to agree how to handle subdomains for CIDs longer than 63 characters. Please add yourself uh, to the list if you want to be invited to that meeting. Uh, any other design review proposals? No, oh, cool. Uh, blockers and asks. Anyone blocked by anything or need someone to do something? Cool. Uh, questions. Um, all right, here's some questions. Yep. Um, hi, everyone. So one of the things that I kind of run into as I was trying to write a proposal for sharing with community about the uh, sharing a node across browser tabs, uh, things that came up is how do we share the configuration between those nodes across the tabs? Because if you share the nodes and you have to share the configuration, at least the way things stand now. Um, I try to go through all the configuration options that are at least documented uh, to try to put some notes. Uh, I think generally it might be a good idea to reduce some of the configuration and choose what makes sense for the browser and have that and have that out of the box. If people want to opt out of it, then they can use their own thing. Uh, but if you share, then you end up sharing the configuration. So I could use some help, first of all, looking at my notes, whether they make sense at all or not. Um, and generally, I think it's kind of more open-ended conversation because I think even though this is specific to the context that I'm currently looking at, uh, I think it's broader than that. If you think about native IPFS support within the browsers, like what Brave is doing and Opera is doing, uh, you can imagine that there will be no configuration that every tab makes or every embedder does their own because IPFS node is part of the browser. Um, I think that's also an issue that came up before with the textile desktop being a thing and radical being a thing and IPFS desktop being a thing, they all kind of end up embedding their own IPFSs and do no sharing. So um, I don't know what the right format for this conversation to have is, but I could use some help there. Um, and I think by looking at the bunch of the configuration options that we have now, I think two things that I sort of recognize there is some of the configuration things seems like could be part of the API call options that you pass in. They don't necessarily have to be the whole node configuration things that you set up ahead of time. And I think wherever it's possible, it probably makes best sense to do that there. And the other one is some of the configuration seems like user ought to be making the choices like which nodes it's uh, willing to share uh, data or which would uh, which forms to join versus embedder of the application to do so. So we are about to run out of time for this meeting. Um, so if people need to drop off, they can drop off. Uh, I would suggest for this, create a proposal, uh, put it in a GitHub issue, um, and then try and find some time in everyone's calendar for relevant stakeholders to discuss the proposal. Does that sound good? Would that be a design review proposal? Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, I, I guess it's, I don't think I have enough knowledge to be able to propose something specific. So is there any format where I can ask for feedback before I propose something specific? Um, you can just ask for feedback. Yeah, usually just create an issue, highlight what you're thinking and ask people to, to give feedback. Although try to write as little as possible with many, many, many bullet points. It makes it easier for people to digest.
Thanks. Cool, final items, the parking lot, anything uh, that doesn't fit into the other categories? Amazing, then I think we're done. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. This has been the IPFS Core Confrontations Weekly Sync for Monday, the 18th of May, 2020. Uh, be safe, see you all on the internet.